guys, I'm Kaya, and on this episode of Yellow Spandex, we're talking about Captain Marvel. When young Billy Batson met an ancient wizard, oh wait, he's not Captain Marvel anymore? Okay, uh, well, after the Kree sent a spy named Marvel to Earth, oh wait, hold on, no, he's been dead since 1982. All right, for real this time. Carol Danvers is blazing new trails and shattering the glass ceiling as Marvel's first female superhero to star in her own movie. Over her 50 year history, Carol's gone by a lot of names, but her new movie is about to introduce her to the world as the latest in the long legacy of Captain's Marvel. From second banana to superstardom, this is the evolution of Captain Marvel. Carol's late career renaissance has made her one of today's most important superheroes, but she's been kicking around the Marvel universe since the late 60s. So let's start, as always, with the comics. In her first appearance, Carol was a U.S. Air Force officer who oversaw security for a top secret military base, one where a Kree soldier named Marvell just so happened to be undercover. Soon the OG Captain Marvel traded in his green military uniform for a more traditional black and red superhero costume, just in time to save the day when Carol was caught in a massive alien explosion. The blast merged her human DNA with the Krees, giving her crazy cosmic powers, which, of course, required a snazzy superhero look of her own, along with a new codename, Ms. Marvel. The character was linked to the feminist movement from day one. Her name, Ms. Marvel, as opposed to Miss or Mrs., was a response to Gloria Steinem's groundbreaking magazine of the same name, and so was Carol's new job, the editor of a suspiciously similar publication. So far, so good, right? But as far as her costume designed by John Romita, well, let's just digest this for a second. From the shoulders up, it's perfect. A feminized version of Marvel's second uniform with a nice mask, long sleeves and gloves, and even a scarf to protect her from the harsh vacuum of space. But that's not what's gonna keep you warm with an exposed midriff and less than zero pants. Seriously, it looks like the doorbell rang while she was getting dressed and forgot to finish, and everyone from the readers to the creative crew complained. By issue number nine, Carol's shirts were extended to cover her belly, and when artist Dave Cockrum took over the drawing duties in issue number 20, he debuted a brand new costume that was completely divorced from her Cree connection. A single one piece with a lightning bolt logo, thigh high boots, opera gloves, and a big red pointless sash. For some reason, Cockrum had a fixation on sashes, see also Phoenix, but the super 70s design stuck for a long time. After an evil rogue permanently sapped her powers, Carol was transformed by the brood into binary, complete with a set of star-based superpowers and a brand new fiery costume. After cruising the cosmos for a few years, Carol returned to Earth and stepped back into her Miss Marvel uniform to join the Avengers, but she left her old name behind and rechristened herself Warbird after a slang term for fighter jet. Carol's stint in the Avengers didn't work out so well. She was dealing with an alcohol addiction at the time and was kicked off the team for drinking on duty. But she managed to take control of her life, take back her name, and by 2012, she was taking flight. When Kelly Sue DeConnick took control of Carol Danvers, she had one clear goal in mind to portray the troubled pilot as a bold explorer of the unknown in the vein of pioneering astronauts and test pilots like Chuck Yeager. And by finally having her assume the mantle of Captain Marvel, DeConnick was able to explore what the legendary heroes really mean to the universe they're named after. Along with the new name and direction, Carol also received a new uniform designed by artist Jamie McKelvey. It keeps the colors and symbolism of Marvel's classic suit and remixes them with a fighter pilot sensibility. There's a high collar, sturdy glove and boots, and a full length zipper that, wow, actually stays zipped. Who would have thought? It even comes equipped with a badass helmet for flights through the vacuum of space. Carol's new uniform was an incredible mix of comic book form and military functionality. Well, except for the sash, but there's no reason to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Whatever the f that means. The Connick said the costume looks like the dress uniform for the superhero branch of the military, and she's not wrong. Carol's new look has become iconic, and with a few minor alterations, it's the one we're finally going to see on screen. Carol first appeared in, of all places, the 90s X-Men animated series as a figure from Rogue's past who returns to haunt her in a storyline ripped straight from the comics. Sadly, Carol spends most of the show in a coma while her crazed consciousness battles for control of Rogue's body. She's referred to as Miss Marvel here. It's Miss Marvel! 
That's Ms. Marvel to you. But there's no indication of her connection to the Kree or any real explanation as to why she had powers. Still, it was cool to see her show up, especially because Carol wouldn't appear outside the comics again until she popped up in the Ultimate Alliance games nearly a decade later. One of my favorite animated incarnations of Carol came in the amazing Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon, where she wore the midriff free version of her original Miss Marvel costume. She was also voiced by Jennifer Hale, one of the most badass voice actors ever. She played the far superior Femme Shep throughout the entire Mass Effect trilogy, and the same hard edge made her a perfect fit for the Air Force vet Carol. Okay, let's do this ugly. Sadly, this was the only time Hale would play the role since Greta Lyle has become Carol's de facto actress across most Marvel multimedia, from Avengers Assemble to Marvel vs. Capcom. In 2019, Brie Larson is stepping into Carol's boots for her big live-action debut, although we could have seen her even earlier. Originally, Carol was planned to be a supporting cast member in Jessica Jones until Marvel decided to give her the spotlight she deserves and replaced her with Patsy Walker. Given how the Netflix shows seem almost embarrassed by the concept of superhero costumes, You look like a damn fool. You run around dressed like a moron beating people up! This is it. This is the one. No. And that's the whole fucking point. It's superhero costumes and capes and for them to look stupid but also be confident. After Brie Larson was cast and set pictures first leaked, we saw a version of the suit with a pale green color scheme, which is both a callback to Marvel's very first appearance and an indication that she'll be serving with the Kree military before breaking out on her own. And now that we've finally seen the final version, it looks like the MCU has once again delivered an amazing translation from page to screen. Under Rouge! Nice job, kid. Thanks. Well, I could have stuck the landing a little better. It's just a new suit. Wait, it's nothing. Mr. Stark, it's, it's perfect. Thank you. The 2012 redesign was already pretty practical by superhero standards, so it didn't require many changes to bring it to life. It definitely looks a lot more armored, with the same accent lines throughout the body that we see in costumes like Captain America and Homecoming Spidey. I like the militaristic new touches like the fingerless gloves. It's very 20... What, what year was it when everyone used to wear fingerless gloves? Because I used to f***ing love them. And while I'm sad there's no sign of the sash, I'm pumped we're going to see a version of her infamous mohawk helmet. Overall, Captain Marvel's movie costume is one giant leap forward for female superheroes, and just like she did in the comics, Carol Danvers is about to take the entire genre higher, further, and faster. Thanks for watching, guys. Captain Marvel has been a long time coming, and I want to know your favorite version of the character, the OG Kree design, Warbird, or did you join the Carol Corps based on her debut as Captain Marvel? Leave a comment, let me know, and as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.